three ways on how to invest from Mexico or Latin America in the U.S. if you're going to invest in real estate. Okay, I'm going to talk three just basic ways on how you can do that or pretty much actually anywhere in the country or in the world, sorry, anywhere in the world you can invest in the U.S. Just check your legal, uh, with your legal counsel, your legal team and your CPAs on all that. Obviously, I'm not an expert and I'm not a CPA or an attorney, but this is just entertainment purposes only. But this is how one way that you can invest in the U.S. from outside the U.S., right? So go check my other video on part one where I speak about how to open a entity, a business, so you can fund your investments in the U.S., okay? Go check out part one. This is part two. The first way that you can invest here in the U.S. is kind of an active investor, right? You can, you can, uh, if you can fly in or if you want to just do it virtually, you can come out and you can buy properties, manage them virtually, and have a, have a team here in place where you can fix and flip, you can buy rentals, you can buy commercial buildings, you can buy apartment buildings, you can buy land, you can build new, you can do all kinds of stuff, okay? But let's keep it a little bit basic, right? Maybe you want to just buy some rental houses. You can do that from virtually anywhere in the world in the U.S., okay? Very easy. That's how you're an active investor. You bring your money here. Maybe you bring money with other investors and you start buying properties here, right? Maybe you got a good bank re banking relationship and they give you loans, right? I don't know where you stand financially, okay? Number two is you can let people borrow your money, right? You can say, hey, look, can we borrow your money at a whatever, 8% return and you give money to somebody here in the United States, they invest in real estate and then they give you a return back. That's the passive, right? How long will you give it to them? Three months, six months, 12 months, five years? I really don't know, right? It depends on the project, right? Who depends on the investor and it depends on you. What's your personality? What do you feel comfortable uh, lending, right? And how much? And how much that person, how much do they need, okay? So that's kind of a passive way of investing in the U.S. from other parts of the world and there's ways of doing that. Go check out part one. Just very basic. If you have specific questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best I can or connect you with somebody that I know that could probably help you. Third way. I kind of like the third way. It's a little bit, it's kind of my favorite uh, because it's kind of a combination of both. Uh, well, not really active, but it's a combination of being a passive investor like option two and actually keeping some of the equity, right? Keeping some ownership of the project, right? So for example, where I'll give you some, some case studies that I've, you know, working on, if we got a project and we have an investor that say, hey, you know, we're going to buy a project that's $10 million and our down payment, you know, we need to bring $3 million to the table and the bank will give us the other $7 million and they'll give us the remodel, but we need $3 million as a down payment. You know, what can you do for me if I bring you $3 million, right? This is what I would say. Look, bring me the $3 million, what's well, going to be a, maybe a, two to five year project. Let's just say it's a three year project. And what I'll do while your $3 million is in the project, I will give you a 6% return on your money, right? 5% return on your money, 8% return on your money. It depends on the project. Okay. But let's just say a 6% return on the $3 million per year, right? So what's 6% of $3 million every single year? That's $180,000. Is that right? I think that's right. I did that math quickly. So $180,000 a year that you will make as long as the money is in the project. Now, after three years, I love to hear about this method. It's, I call it the Uber of real estate, right? The ultimate burr, where basically what it means is you're going to raise the value of the property, and in two, three, four, five years, whatever the business plan is, you're going to refinance it. So let's assume that the property is worth uh, $15 million in three years, right? Now, the bank's going to come in, and the bank say the bank's going to give you $11 million, right? If it's worth $15 million, you do a refinance and the bank gives you $11 million. So guess what happens? You had a loan for at the beginning, right? You bought it for $10 million. You had an investor who bought you $3 million and the bank brought you the other seven. So you pay the first investor back, well, the bank $7 million and then the investor you're giving back is $3 million. You have a million dollars left over, right? Now, the investor already made his $180,000 a year for the first three years, right? He got that money. Now, there's a million dollars left. So what happens with this million dollars? You can structure this like a combination, right? 
I, I, you give the investor a 6% return on his money for as long as it's in the deal, and then he gets his money back. After that's done, the investor will keep a 20% ownership, right? Like his company, right? Especially if you're from Mexico, you have a company in the U.S., that LLC or that company owns 20% of that project. So let's assume that that project cash flows $20,000 a month. It should cash flow more, but let's just say that it cash flows $20,000 a month after all expenses. That means that you or that investor, just say it's you, would keep 20% of this $20,000 coming in, which is, what, $4,000 a month. So you got your $3 million back. You made $180,000 per year. So maybe you had it there for three years, almost $600,000 you got back. And now you're made whole. You got all your money back. Now you're getting $4,000 every single month until this property sold or whatever it is, right? Um, Which is pretty cool. Not just that. But remember, there's a million dollars on the refinance, right? Let's say there's a million dollars in the refinance. Since you own 20%, at that point, you'll own 20% of this project, you get 20% of that refinance. So if there's $200,000, those $200,000 you also get, right? So you got your... 6% 6% PREF, $180,000 a year for three years, every single year. And then you got 20% of the million dollars from the refinance because the bank gave us a million dollars. We paid off 10. Now you made another 200000 You get 20% ownership, right? And then moving forward, you have a $4,000 a month cash flow for this property. Now, let's say we hold this property for 10 years and we sell it for, you know, we sell it for $21 million and our loan is for 11. There's a $10 million profit. And you're still owner of that 20%. So in 10 years from now, you get another $2 million on top of that, plus all the money you, you made throughout those 10 years. For me, that's the best way to partner with somebody where you don't just give them their money, right? And then they, they use your money, you make a return. There's nothing wrong with that, right? If somebody wants 6%, 8%, I'll give that to them all day long. But if I can kick in some equity at the end, a 20%, 10%, 15%, whatever the numbers work to make that deal, I'm just giving this as an example, maybe it'd be 20% or 15 but just to make this deal work for that investor. Because what's going to happen if this deal takes a year or a year and a half and the investor gets the money back, they're going to run and reinvest it on another project, right? And in another project and another project. And they know people, if they got $3 million, trust me, they know people with with as maybe a little bit less, but definitely know people with more money than $3 million to let you uh, help you invest here uh, in the U.S. So that's like kind of my combination. It's a combination model. I like that because you get some kind of income coming in from the beginning and you actually get a cash out at the end. There's a lot of other ways to structure it, but I'm just giving you a big, big picture, right? Maybe if the project doesn't cash flow for the first year, you don't get paid. That's 6% preferred, but maybe in year two, you get paid a little bit more, and in year three, you get paid even more, and then when the property sells or refinance, you get you get all your money that you're owed. You know, it's just a lot of ways to structure these deals to make them work, as long as it's a win-win situation. That is a, my favorite model is to do it that way because it allows somebody like me to be able to go buy real estate and have my team do all the operations while there's a passive investor. Now, ideally, I would love to have you know, uh, one investor, right, to come in and put money, hypothetically, $3 million in one project, right? So that's the best case scenario, have one investor, right? Because you can give away 20% of the, of the project for the $3 million. Now, maybe it might be two investors, maybe it's three investors. Each one brings in a million dollars, right? Now, if you're going to give away 10, 20% of the project and there's three people that bring you money, that 20% gets split up on those three people, right? So it depends how much money somebody's bringing, right? Ideally, you want somebody to bring the big check, just a lot you know, less work, and that person makes the most money. So that's how you can do kind of a combination, right? You can get money from people here in the U.S. You get money from people from other countries. I love it, especially if you live in another country and you want to invest in the U.S. Find yourself a good operator. Find yourself somebody you like and you trust, and you like what they're buying, okay? And, you, and their personality and their investment personality fits your investment personal, personality. So then you can guys can work together and make money, you know, long term. This is the long term wealth builder because you, the goal here is to try to keep the properties, you know, keep them, you know, for a year, two, three, four, five, and then refinance and keep them forever, right? Not try to sell if you can avoid it, right? If the market changes, you got to sell. But ideally, you want to keep these properties. Maybe you refinance and there's no money to cash out, right? Maybe earlier I said there's a million dollars cash out. What if there's no money to cash out? That's still okay. You still made your money, your 6% on your money. 
and moving forward, you're going to collect like four grand a month, right? It's still a great return, especially if you keep it long term, right? Because we want to build long term wealth, not just do transactional transactional funding. So that is my favorite uh, model, kind of a hybrid, a little bit of interest and a part of the project. Check out my other parts of the video. I have a part three to talk a little bit about paying taxes and how um, you won't be able, you, if you do it structurally properly, you'll pay very little taxes here in the U.S., right? Depends where you're at in other parts of the world. You can structure it a little bit different, but your money here in the U.S., you will be able to pay practically, if you do it right, zero taxes on all the income that you make. So go check out part three of this three-part, I think it's a three-part series. It might become longer. Just keep searching the YouTube uh, channels. If you have questions on how to exactly do this, reach out to me, put a comment here. We'll send you an email. We can set up a time to have a conversation and I can tell you exactly the right steps to uh, be able to set up your entity in the United States, uh, the right steps for you to invest if you want to invest passively or actively in the United States. And if you have some tax questions, I'm not really a tax professional, but I could point you in the right direction. I want you to have a pleasant and profitable investment experience in the U.S. So reach out to me if you have any questions or any doubts.